All right, Ryan Rose, who are you? Tell me uh, what, what you're about. Uh, so I am the Skills and Certification uh, Director here with yeah, Learn. You know oh, thank you so much. So um, uh, I am the Director of our Skills and Certification Portfolio uh, at Learn with Cisco. So it's my job to actually help make sure that our portfolio, our training, our certifications stay up to date and uh, are also relevant for people trying to get jobs. So. That's awesome because uh, Jeremy and I were super focused on making a video content that helps people get their certifications, get their jobs. How is it hard to stay relevant with the certifications nowadays with things moving so quickly that my head is spinning every single day? Oh, that's a really great question. I mean, I know that we're, I mean, I've been working on this kind of stuff for 15 years with Cisco, and I'll say that technology has just been making leaps and bounds and jumps for all of those 15 years. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that when a lot of people think of us and they think of learning and certifications, they think certifications, and then they think of learning. What I like to do is, is I always look at the skills first. Okay. Even when technology is changing, like how fast AI is changing, I always try to boil it down to skills. It was like with HyperShield. It's like, oh, you know, we could, we could talk a lot about a product, but the skill is EBPF. You know yeah. what I mean? And so we always start now with how do we enable through skills? And then when our audience, when our community, when all of that certified, when all those people that are thinking about certification have been building up those skills, we connect that to a certification journey. You know, nobody starts, I think, any type of learning journey thinking, I am going to go sit in an exam. I, I think everybody actually starts with, I want to or I wish I could. Yeah. And so for us, it's how do it, it, the, the certifications remain relevant when we start with a skills focused mindset, we add in the training, and then we, uh, we get to that certification. Describe a skills focused mindset. Oh. I, I, I would love to do that. So, uh, again, uh, an outcome is can be a certification, but you think about what is the certification doing? It's validating skills that are unlocking capabilities, either yeah. for yourself or a larger organization. So, I always think of design. Yep. Design is a skill. That, that we want to instill inside of all of our certification community. I mean, especially now with so much, uh, you know, it talk about AI and you know, uh, uh, so much of a drive around automation. Uh, having that design skill unlocks a mindset. Mm. And so, what we want to do is not just teach you about how to use a product or how to deploy a network. We want to talk about skills that are going to follow you through your entire career. And so having, for example, that design skill, that ability to be thinking about business requirements, the outcome of, of the investment of the technology, right. um, how operations should work, not just how to come in and just start immediately you know, pulling cable. Um, that skill focus, I mean, with all of this talk about AI, I keep saying this is a time for experts. This is a time for skilled individuals because that's what separates people from really being able to like build their careers and get great jobs versus someone that's just gonna type something into ChatGPT and not know the difference between a right answer and a wrong answer. So how are you shaping the certifications to go after skills? Oh. Instead of just, I memorize these, these answers. Uh, I'll, I'll just use, um, recently uh, we've updated our DevNet portfolio to, to reflect the names of CCN, instead of DevNet Associate, it's now CCNA Automation, CCNP Automation, CCIE Automation. And those programs, for example, are divided out into domains. We bring in a lot of people, um, experts inside of Cisco, experts outside of Cisco. In fact, we talked to people from NVIDIA when we started building our AI stuff. Um, uh, we bring a lot of minds to the table and we start dividing things out in what we call knowledge domains. And from there, in those knowledge domains, we start talking about skills, the skills that a person needs. So for example, in the CCNA automation, there's an entire domain around understanding and using APIs. That's a skill, that's not a product. That's not, mm. that's not something that we're saying, oh, you're gonna need to understand how you're gonna call, for example, a Meraki API, but rather, 
How do you use APIs? What is an API? How do you apply them? How, do they, how does that fit into your overall network operations? Mm -hmm. Even the skill, for example, of storing your network configurations inside of a GitHub repo and, and actually bringing software skills to the network. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how we really architect and how I'm very passionate about how we architect all of our certifications from CCNA all the way up to CCIE. Uh, again, products are going to change, technologies are going to change, but if we can instill inside of you a mindset, a, a set of learning culture skills, uh, that to me is I think what's key to making someone successful. Yeah, so what's interesting now is, uh, and sorry, we have to keep going back and oh, forth. No, no, no. Um, I see the CCNA, it's kind of becoming the everything cert in a way. Like it's very network focused, but it's bringing in so many skills like AI skills, API skills. Do you see it always being the network associate or will it maybe evolve and change to encompass more technologies than just networking? Oh, that, that's a really great question. So I think that CCNA itself is, is always going to be a starting point for anybody that wants to get into networking. I, I, I really do. I think that that's always going to be that, that first step. But I think the network is changing, and thus the role of the network engineer is changing. And so I think that for us, it's more of a matter of how does the CCNA keep reflecting those changing job roles? And I think that's why, for example, I think the expectation of the CCNA engineer, that's really what's changing. And I, I think that there's uh, uh, you know, uh, more OT items that are starting to seep their way into the CCNA engineer. I think that there's more um, security. Obviously, we have an entire security domain. I, I, as security and networking blend more together. So I think that we're always going to have CCNA be that great first step into those IT jobs, into those networking jobs. Um, but I think that as more is, more is expected of even at the NA level, like we've been hearing all week, we, we keep hearing that uh, people want to see NAs have a troubleshooting mindset, maybe not be at a IE level of troubleshooting, but be able to have that troubleshooting mindset to be able to be a problem solver. I think as those expectations keep rising, we will be updating the CCNA to match that, to make sure that when you get that NA and you arrive on your job day one, you can do a job. Okay. Now, I know with the, uh, the announcement of the deep network uh, chat or AI that has been fine-tuned on networking, I think they advertised it was like CCIE buddy, right? Like it, it can pass the CCIE. Um, are you looking at training CCNA folks to be able to use the deep network? Is that kind of like where we see it going. They have that deep network AI along with them to help them troubleshoot, design, and, and, and build networks. Oh. That's another really good question. So I, I think that the AI assistance, which we actually have some uh, tutorials on that right now inside of uh, Cisco U, um, I think that's going to be another tool in the toolbox. And I think that especially for, you know, we do a lot of survey work on the up and coming next generation of network engineers, not just Gen Z, but even Gen Alpha. These are tools that they're already using. Mm -hmm. So we have to start showing them how they can use that in a professional setting. So I think that your question is brilliant because it speaks to, again, the changing role and expectations of that CCNA engineer. Now. I don't think that that'll ever, like I said before, I, I think that this is a time for experts. There's always going to be a huge need for experts. So those CCNAs that are starting now that are the future CCIEs, I think it's critical that they keep building those skills because the human plus AI is going to be able to do amazing things and unlock creativity on things like network architecture, network design, how you can build networks for the future, how you can build networks for business requirements. I think that's going to be critically important. But I think there's another part to what you're saying which is a lot of people come to us and say, hey, like, how is AI going to affect my job? And it reminds me of when automation, I, I used to be on the DevNet side. And so for a long time, we used to tell people, automation's not going to take your job, but the people that know automation, they're the ones that are going to get hired. I feel the same way about AI now. The people that know how to use AI, to your question, they're the ones that are going to get hired. Okay, and do we... When you're teaching, so obviously we'll have to teach AI, AI skills to um, the new generation. What AI skills are being targeted in the CCNA? Or will, what, 
are you planning to put into the CCNA? Are we looking at understanding RAG, or are we looking at understanding MCP? Are we going to see those ter terms come up in, in the skills we're developing? Well, right now, the skill that we do have in the CCNA, and it's one that we are going to keep reinforcing, is understanding how to use um, predictive AI as well as generative AI. A number of systems that Cisco is already utilizing in the network right now, like I'll just use network assurance as an example, um, that's using uh, AI ML. And so what we're going to keep working on is making sure that the CCNA person knows the tools that are available to them, but also knows the difference among those tools. Like what tools are being powered by generative AI or that deep model? What tools are being powered by AI ML, like you know, Internet Insights or Thousand Eyes? And then how to use that data. You know, a thing that we have, because a, a big part that's also we're talking about here is how Networking Academy and what has traditionally been learning and certifications is one org. So now we can build these kind of holistic learning plans. We've already started to put data analytics training into those early years. Um, uh, pre-CCNA, so that way we can have you start thinking about, if you're going to be using those AI tools, how can you use them smartly? How can you be using them with data? And that CCNA will continue to be testing people as well as building skills around understanding that generative AI tool usage as well as AI ML. Okay, so uh, with the exams, are we going to see any AI collaboration when you're being tested? Because obviously the modern engineer is going to have troubleshooting or they're going to be working on a network, but they're going to have ChatGPT or whatever tool they're given alongside them. Are we going to have that tested while they're in the exam room? Oh. It's a really good question. So for us, right now, we're exploring a number of different options. I will say this, like, if you're studying for an exam right now, those conditions are not going to be changing. Like, push forward, you know, take your exams. Um, but right now, we're looking at a number of different options. I think if for those of us who have gone and taken what was the DevNet Associate and is now the CCNA Automation, um, I'm sure those people can rapidly attest to the fact that we, were, we introduced areas in that exam that that were new, that people were even surprised about seeing. And so as those types of technologies change, and even the expectation of what tools are available to the individual, you even see this in the, what we've done with CCIE, um, uh, we will always be exploring ways to incorporate that into our exams. But right now, our exams are exactly what they've been, and people can continue to get ready and take those exams just as they have been. Okay. So you, you've been saying a couple times, uh, the evolving CCNA, the evolving CCNA, the, the person in the CCNA of tomorrow. If you were to sift it down, what is the CCNA of tomorrow compared to the CCNA of yesteryear? Oh, I, I love this question. So um, we recently, we've been talking about this here um, at Cisco Live and on the floor. So I like to call this person the modern network engineer. And I believe if, if I could, just to give a Ryan Rose opinion on this, I believe that it's really broken up of, of the following skill sets. I think 50% of your job as a, as a modern network engineer is secure route and switch. You got to know routers, you got to know switches, you got to understand uh, the enterprise network, you got to understand all of that stuff. That's 50% of your job, and you got to be able to get an A plus on that stuff. You got to be able to know it inside and out because that's like the rules, that's the foundation of everything else you're going to stand on. If you don't understand that, you're going to be guessing seen at everything else. I think 20% of your job is around automation. I think now you have to have those basic skills around program, uh, programming and automation. You have to understand the effects of automation. You have to understand things like net DevOps. Uh, you have to understand how that can affect your job and, and really how it can make it easier and how you can be more effective. I think 20% of your job is around cloud skills. And I know that's not the most self-serving from Cisco to say, but I think that there isn't a CCNA engineer that's coming into a network now that isn't encountering some type of cloud service. Mm -hmm. So understanding the network, on-prem, hybrid, multi-cloud, mm -hmm. all of that, I think that's really important. And then 10% of your skills are in AI and AI infra. I, I, I think you got to understand how those AI tools work. I think uh, you got to understand how you can apply them in, in your own everyday life, in your everyday role, as well as understand um, AI infrastructure from the standpoint of that stuff can get expensive. So you should probably have an idea of what AI can do to either save money or affect your bottom line or your top line. Uh, I know that those that's a wide ranging skill set, but that I think makes 
100% of the modern network engineer. Mm -hmm. Now, that's just my recommendation on things to be thinking of in training. Uh, I mean, obviously, we, we updated the CCNA, um, what was it, last April? We're really pleased with that update. But I would say that if someone's looking to the future, if they're looking to what they should be getting ready for, that 50, 20, 20, 10 breakdown is what I'd recommend. Okay. Two minutes, right? So I guess this will be our last question here. Unless Jeremy has a really good one, then we'll let him say it. Uh, let's say five years. What do you think a network engineer will look like? So this is just me future casting, again, a Ryan Rose opinion, um, is that I, I will say this. I, I think this is a person that is going to see um, a great blend of um, those classic network engineering skills. I, I feel like if you want to understand, as they say, the larger mystery, you have to understand the basics first. I think that network engineer looks similar to the one that is today, but they've in, uh, incorporated uh, more security skills because again, there's not a company I know of that wants an insecure network. Yep. And, and I, I would also say someone that understands it, not just from a network security standpoint, but a cybersecurity standpoint, understands red teaming, understands pen testing, understands blue teaming skills like incident response and threat hunting. I also think that that's someone that natively understands automation. I, I, I think that you know everybody thinks about AI almost like it's an easy button. It's not. If you really want to get the benefits of AI, if you really want to feel them in your network, you have to you have to automate more of your network uh, operations and activities, and that's going to be a big part of I think any uh, CCNA, CCNP, CCIE engineer and what they're doing. They're going to be thinking about how they can really drive that automation to get the benefits of AI. Otherwise, when I hear of people talk about oh it's all hype, it's all hype until you really automate that network activity, and I. I think that that's going to be a big part of the future work that our engineers are going to be doing. Okay, awesome. Well, Ryan, I know you have to go. I'm getting a zero minute call from somebody. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk oh, with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, Ryan. Yeah.